come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. You can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hit that like or the subscribe button or give us a review. Hell, we'll even read your comments on the air. And uh, you know what else you can do to help us is you can head on over to our T Public store, buy some of our fantastic swag. Michaela, how can they get a hold of some of our swag? If they go to tpublic.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show, you'll see all of our awesome merch options. There's uh, our classic logo design. There's a Ouija board design. There's an I Survived 400 episodes. There's all sorts of good stuff. So go check it out. Yeah, check that out. Because again, we're okay. trying to you, become. You know, oh. What if? What if we? What if we put it out there? This an idea. I. This is just, just spitballing here. What if we do like a pledge? Like if we sell five hundred dollars worth of merch in the next like month, we'll put together a freak show calendar. <laughs> oh no! Hell yeah! Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. Uh, sure. Why not? We'll, we'll, we'll workshop that one. Yeah. We might have that for next week. Who knows? Holly, you need to do an NPR style, like pledge commercial now, like, <laughs> or PBS style, you know, they do their like oh, twice. I annual. love PBS. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, well, you've heard from some of us, uh, but who are these internet radio superstars? Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. Sean is on assignment tonight. So we took it upon ourselves to watch a movie, which was chosen by... Holly, what did we watch tonight? Tonight, we went back to Colin's favorite year in horror, the year 2000, (laughs) and we watched Dracula 2000. Uh, Directed by... (laughs) Oh, shit. Who is it directed by? Um, It is directed by Patrick... Is it Lucier? Lucier, yeah. Lucia? Yeah. yeah. This guy's all, always sniffing around the horror genre, isn't he? Yeah, he, he likes to he likes to show up around the freak show a little bit. Yeah, he's he's come around a few times. Uh we've 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 seen some of his other work. We watched Drive Angry, which uh which was a, an episode of the freak show. That was a fun one. Um he directed My Bloody Valentine in 2009. I, we did the original, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. The which, remake's not bad though. The remake's not bad. Colin and I watched the remake. Um, uh, that was the first time I'd ever seen it. I went and watched it with Colin when, right around the same time we watched the original. And I actually really liked it. I was surprised. In 3D. In yeah, 3D. Because it's, yeah. it's Colin and he makes me watch things in 3D. <laughs> um, but, you know, he also, he didn't have, well, he didn't have all winners. He also wrote uh, or directed uh, Terminator Genesis. So, you know. Yeah. Ben Weisses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fun ben <laughs> yeah, he was uh, Wes Craven's editor for a while because he worked on New Nightmare and Vampire in Brooklyn, and then he did all three of the Scream movies, and I think that's probably why. This movie was released under the alternate title. Oh, I don't know. What is it? Wes Craven Presents Dracula 2000. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant like a totally different title. I was like, why? I don't know this. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Wes Craven Presents. <laughs> yeah, this was... Like, uh, Bank presents is always like, uh, what does that really mean? You know, presents can mean a lot of things, but I it mean, usually it, means nothing. It honestly, it just makes me want to put that on like everything I do. Like Holly Fuca presents, I don't know, pizza party. Like I just want to say that about everything. I just think that's it's just the dumbest thing. <laughs> yeah, but he had because there was a number of like uh, Wes Craven presents movies that came out around this period of time. I remember because you know Scream was such a big hit and revitalized horror. Wes Craven became the brand name, and I remember going to see some. Was Wishmaster a Wes Craven presents? I can't remember. Maybe not, but I um, think so. Yeah, maybe yeah, it was. Sure it was. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we talked about that, didn't we? Yeah, yeah maybe yeah, we did. Sure it was. But and you know what? Our memory is short here at the Freak Show. It really is. Don't ask I, us what we watched last week. <laughs> Colin always you always put me on the spot thinking that I'm going to remember like a movie that I brought. Like you remember who directed that? I'm like no, I don't fucking remember who directed that. I don't remember what I bring to the show. But I feel like Eli Roth also does a lot of presents, and they're not good. You know, like yeah. Well, the worst thing yeah. I think one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life was Wes Craven presents They. 
which nobody remembers. Thank God. If you don't, I saw it in the theater, and it was one of the worst movies I think I've ever seen in my life. So he was just slapping his name on everything. But, I mean, obviously he helped get this movie produced, and Patrick Lussier was able to rise up through the ranks from editor to director, then from there to the heights of Terminator Genesis. Okay. Uh, movie everyone has forgotten. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's not even the most recent Terminator movie anymore. I know they wrote that. They wrote that oh, yeah. one out when they read it when they did Dark Fate. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, um, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So Dracula in the year two thousand. Yeah. Um. Well, who? I guess the first thing you got to go with is who's who's your Dracula in Dracula two thousand. I mean, who else would you cast but Gerard Butler? <laughs> Yeah, Good old Jerry Butts. Good old Jerry Butts. <laughs> I think this was the first thing I'd ever seen him in. Um, yeah, it, yeah, for sure. Because I remember, if I'm not mistaken, I I do remember like his next break, and I'm like, oh, this guy's probably going to go somewhere. Was um, he was in the Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider Two, Cradle of Life. I think he was the male lead opposite Angelina Jolie in that movie, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, clearly we have a star in the making, and now Gerard yeah, Butler is like, you know. Revered. Wasn't Phantom of the Opera around this time as well? Yeah. He was yeah. on, yeah, he had his hot streak, you know. And I mean, I guess, you know, you got to say that he's uh, been able to keep it going for what, you know, 20, 20 odd years. I mean, he's still, his uh, Olympus Has Fallen sequels are like some of the biggest grossing movies in the world. Each year they it's come out. I've seen how much money they make. I do, and like, Colin, you're like the only person I know that's ever watched any of those movies. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, who the fuck is going to see these movies? Not me. <laughs> uh, everyone, everywhere, but in the United States. The United States right. doesn't do all that well, but they do like crazy. I mean, like, you're not going to believe yeah. it, folks. If you look up the grosses, like the highest grossing movies, the years those come out <laughs> are those movies. Yeah. Um, like, who sees those movies? All of Asia. Yeah. All of Asia. <laughs> Well, this literally is literally everyone in every country but America. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's what yeah. it seems like. Yeah. Um, well, so we're going back to the Dracula myth. Yeah, Holly, I'm surprised that I didn't bring this movie. I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, no, I, I always, I always <laughs> knew either you or I were going to bring it. It just was who was going to get there first. Right. It's been on you know? the, the endless list. It's on there. It was all like, yeah, well, you know, at some point you can't do all the Christopher Lee and the Franklin Jella Draculas and the Dracula's mm-hmm. dogs. At some point, you got to go and. You know, venture into the 2000s to see what they were doing. Was this the, I'm trying to think, like, after this movie, the next big notable Dracula movie was Dracula Untold, right? Of Luke Evans? Probably. Unless I'm missing one somewhere in there. But we've also kind of approached the period in time where it's like, okay, we've done Dracula to death, but they still love doing Dracula. Dracula, who I think we established, aside from Sherlock Holmes, is one of the most, like, filmed characters, like, in history, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, th- I think we may, we may have brought this up in one of our other episodes, but like, like you said, it's been done to death and we all feel like, oh, we've seen everything they can do with Dracula. But still, when Netflix put out the Dracula, I watched it, you know, it's like, I can't help myself. I got to watch it. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the most recent thing, probably. Yeah, that, that was made the most a recent. Pretty yeah. big splash when it came out. Um, OK, so. um this movie has like, okay, so I just, I also, you know, because I, I do, you know, collector of all things Dracula, I do have the Naturally. Blu-ray of this. And I like the way that the Toronto Sun calls this movie the hip and happening, or it's hip and happening in the tradition of Wes Craven's Scream trilogy. What? No, what? it is not. <laughs> what, because there's young people in it? And a poster that reeks of Scream because it uh, does go. but it also it looks does. like the lost boys it looks like every like 2000s early 2000s horror movie ever yeah. well this is a it's a pattern established by the scream franchise where you're going to put all the heads the giant heads yeah uh, who who wrote that the hippest yeah was he like 90 who wrote that hip and happening in the tradition of west craven scream yeah. it just says toronto sun i don't think we definitely actually an octogenarian it. wrote that like it happened yeah <laughs> Um, so this is a hip revisionist version of Dracula that has scream like thrills and Matrix like action. Because you got to remember, Matrix came no. out the year before. <laughs> so um, if that I was in here, I missed it. Yeah, 
Well, no, it had I wire work. Why there was some wire foo in this? That was a that was actually the thing that I was thinking about this movie, and we'll get into this as we go. But like, you can always tell like there's there's trendsetter movies, and then there's follower movies, and this is like a follower movie because it's like every little thing that they come up with in this, you're like, I think I've seen that in something before. Okay, so um, this movie also has like a giant cast of uh, TV and movie uh, faces. I don't even know if we could go through everybody. Maybe we will just as we go through the plot but uh yeah. we've got gerard butler who was this is like his his breakout movie i guess right and then uh yeah, so the main basically the big name on this project is who uh, well to me it's christopher Plummer. yeah <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> i mean at, at, at the time i don't know if, ever, if everyone was thinking that but to me an avid movie lover is christopher Plummer. <laughs> Yeah, well, when you put Christopher Plummer in your movie, you're giving it some kind of like he's the he's the respectable figure in yeah. your trashy horror movie, you're giving it legitimacy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah, um, but I mean, you, but you have to you have to cast someone like that as Van Helsing, right? Like that's the rule. Yeah, I think so. You got to have like your uh, your elder statesman. And he's of the yeah. right age at that point in time when they made the movie. So it was like, okay, Christopher Plummer. And he said, sure. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but then you have to cast the relatable, like, uh, 20 somethings, right. For your, your core and target audience. And so who, who do we have representing the movie going public in this movie? Uh, his, uh, sidekick, his assistant, his, uh, apprentice, as you would have it is Johnny Lee Miller. Yeah. You remember him? No, from hackers I, I try not to. <laughs> and uh, train spotting, right? Was that where he got his right, start? Yeah. Train spotting. He was on a season of Dexter. He was the big bad in season five, I think. Yeah, and he also had a he run was, as uh, yeah. Sherlock Holmes in a uh, with, opposite... with Lucy Liu. Yeah. yeah, that was I. I can't believe that show went for as long as it did. That's so strange to me that people. Did it? Yeah, I think it got like four or five seasons. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It went for a while. And we've also got Justine Waddell, who I confess uh, is not in films in my uh, wheelhouse. So I was like, she was in Jane Eyre. And uh, I think she Which was in Jane Eyre. Uh, it might have been like a TV. I think she's a British actress. I'm not sure. But obviously she was doing stuff uh, um, around this so I was time. Gonna say she, she wasn't in like the big Jane Eyre with Mia Wasikowski and, and Fassbender. She wasn't in that. No, because that came later. We're looking yeah. at like the late 90s version of this. <clears throat> uh, you know why I think we don't know her, Colin? Because she's terrible. Ouch. Yeah. Can we I think just... That, can, I think yeah. because she has zero energy and presence on screen i was gonna say something in our group chat and i was like no i'll save it for the i'll save it for the show but this girl poor thing she has no charisma like none whatsoever i was like why is she has zero star power i have no idea why she's our leading lady it, it no seems idea. like she doesn't even have the energy to project when she's talking right she she's just, just seems like really a hushed whisper you know what it is? Last week, last week I got my first dose of my COVID shot and I was like had intense fatigue the next day and I was just like a different person. <laughs> that was her in this movie. Just a useless human being. Well, um I I haven't seen anything else that she's done, but my impression and you got to tell me if I'm way off on this. This is me like fantasizing, right? It seems to me that she's like one of these British stars of a lot of British TV shows or, you know, Shakespearean stuff, right? Because they come from England, you train with Shakespeare and then she comes over here and she's going to do this and she does it in like it is a quiet performance, which I blame the director. More so than her, because I think she wasn't being directed like he couldn't communicate like this is the tone of the movie that we're trying to do. And I felt that in other scenes and like his action staging and some of the other performances, it's like, I don't think Patrick Lussier could see in his head how this shot was going to, you know, fit into yeah. the, the rest of the movie as a whole. He was just like, that shot's awesome. And this shot's awesome. I think he's gotten better as a director, but uh, you know, and, and again, I mean, you obviously have to put some of the blame at her feet but i think she wasn't guided to the right you know <laughs> that's that's a that's a good point it doesn't feel like a collective piece it feels like vignettes where no one was really told like the motivation of the entire arc of the story it was just like individual this is what we're shooting today so go ahead and do it like it wasn't really comprehensive as a whole yeah well, yeah 
the uh, the movie does start out because I mean you got to kind of somehow connect. So this is going to be like a a sequel to the novel Dracula and also like a big expansion on it. There is some ideas that they come up with within this movie that are so far off the fucking wall that you will remember this movie once you've seen it. Um, but so it does kind of because you're like okay we're going to do Dracula right and basically yeah. it seems like it is trying to like keep some of the bones of the original story and it makes some nods and like character names and all that to be like okay we are actually doing like dracula we're swapping out a boat for a plane he's coming to a new country you know uh we're gonna name characters lucy and uh sorry what and mary instead of being mary um -hmm. okay so the beginning of this movie you got to set us up what's uh, what is van helsing up to in uh, the modern day well, obviously, he owns an antique shop. What else is he going to be doing? <laughs> obviously. Wait, are you telling me that Van Helsing is somehow immortal? Uh, turns out, yeah, kind of. How'd that A happen? Bit. Um, he has prolonged his life with the immortal elixir of the blood of his enemy. He injects it. So, yeah. you know, keeps him going. I'm curious, though, because... Like a B12 he- shot. He has to um, he has to somehow dilute it or what he, he filters it through the yeah, blood of leeches. This was a like an out of left field, you know, like, OK, we just don't shoot the blood of Dracula straight. God knows what that'll do. To you. Well, yeah. that'll kill no. you. Or that'll turn you into a vampire, I assume. Obviously. Yeah. So he makes vampire leeches. <laughs> right. And then he, he sucks their blood. Weird. <laughs> So he's basically got Dracula chained up in the basement. This, this <laughs> I just I want to be in the room for this this workshop. You know, like yeah. What were they thinking? <laughs> well, first of all, you got to you got to have Dracula on ice to start your movie, right? Then right. the big bad's got to get away, and then he's got to have motivation for what he wants. So we have to come up with well, what is Dracula up to? He can't just be loose. He has to be after some kind of goal. So uh, first of all, we got to get him out of the basement. So how do our screenwriters uh, work this out? What's the what what's the plan here? How are we going to get? So we got Dracula. Well, I mean, I guess we should say in a flashback, it's revealed that Van Helsing in the 1890s was able to trap Dracula by Mm -hmm. use of mirrors and a bunch of spears and cages and stuff like that. Trapped him. And in the process, he got stabbed with a a spear that had been that went through Dracula and got Dracula's blood on it. That got into Van Helsing. And so this gave him the curse. So now we're in the modern day. How do we how do we bring Dracula back to life? Uh. Basically, we have uh, we have a group of thieves that are looking to. Um, were they were they robbing a museum? Who were they robbing? It's a heist. Yeah, they, yeah. It was the, it was a, it was a museum heist. They were. Well, this was the antique tra- store. This was uh, Van Helsing's antique antique shop. Yeah. Oh hey. yeah, that was. But it looks like a museum. Like it looks. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. It it doesn't look like. Sorry, yeah, it doesn't look like um, an antique shop, like the one that we know, the ones that we're used to. It looks like a fucking museum. So, yeah, they're they're trying to steal like art and artifacts and stuff, and they end up stealing this massive coffin, um, basically uh, treating it as like a safe. They th- they view it as like a safe. They think it's there's going to be like treasures inside. Yeah. Um, which why why do they think this well like because, i know there's like that explanation of like well what better place to keep treasures than a coffin because nobody will open it but like that's a lot to stake a heist on yeah yeah there's a whole lot of uh, intrigue going on here because it turns out it's an inside job jennifer esposito from uh, what was she in spin city i can't remember um, Ooh, spin city was it no spin one, city no that one, she was on no one talks about that <laughs> i think it was um but she is like uh her boyfriend is omar epps omar epps brings his crew which consists of um danny masterson from that 70s show (laughs) and uh is it sean uh sean patrick thomas and all these guys like end up like breaking in it's this big heist because you got that like safe vault bank vault door right that leads down into the catacombs where you and where there's all these traps that kill people when they try to fuck with the coffin Uh, this is all like wow we're like star power right we're just throwing people into this movie that's that's what that's what you do in this time right you put a bunch of like well-known younger actors in the beginning of your movie yeah so when you that's, guys that's see the trend 
when you see the name Sean Patrick in uh, credits, do you immediately go Thomas or Flannery? Flannery. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. same. But <laughs> but it's like it could go either way. Who's it going to be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they find out that this coffin has been sealed. Some of their members die in the process of trying to get this thing out of there. And they end up taking it on a plane um, and flying back to America with it. Because, yeah, they think that the old guy has stashed, you know, the family jewels or something inside the coffin. They don't open it like normal people. He can't, I guess. Right. So they put it on a plane and take it. And then. Right. Uh, sure enough, uh, Dracula gets loose on the plane and it turns out that he's in there. So. um this is a really elaborate heist that they had a private plane involved, you know? Right. I was like, how much money do they already have? Like they've, they're clearly right. very successful at, at being, um, I was going to say like heistists. Cause I feel like, that, uh-huh. I feel like it's a specific category of thief, but yeah. Right. So they, they must be really successful thieves if they have their own like fucking private plane. But well, I, I mean, it does make sense though, because. I mean, if you're if you're a professional thief, you they often do just take a whole safe because you don't have time to open it there. You got to crack it open later. So right. that part actually makes sense to me. Yeah, and this isn't just like a cargo sh- like airplane either. The whole front cabin is like a private jet, right? Yeah, that just happens to have a cargo area, right? Yeah, these are those good those good uh, thief money planes that you can you can swing. <laughs> um, That's sweet, sweet thieving money. Yeah. <laughs> So Dracula gets loose on the plane. There's a lot of but fog we, and all but we that need, stuff. I was like, we need to we need to discuss uh, Danny Masterson freeing him from his coffin because that was probably the most traumatic scene in this movie for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty gross. Because we got vampire leeches. We yeah, got about the vampire opens, leeches. <laughs> he opens the coffin to reveal like a fairly like considerably fresh body for like the type of coffin that it is you would think it'd just be a skeleton oh no there's like a body in there um and there's leeches all over it and one of the leeches like it goes into danny masterson's eye yeah and this was just the most traumatic thing to me yeah it was didn't need that you yeah. know no. it was hanging off of his eyelid and he's trying to pull oh. it oh 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 yeah uh- <laughs> that was disgusting <laughs> Well, you got to swing big when you're going to do it. So um, I guess then this is, um, I mean, I suppose you have to talk about Dracula himself in the way that he's portrayed in this movie. Um, I mean, there's always, I'm, I'm always kind of interested in like how movies visualize vampires, you know, because everybody's got to do it yeah. a little different. You can't just have a guy with fangs. You have to do something, right? So yeah. this version borrows from interview with the vampire and gives him faint uh, uh bluish veins on the side of his face gives him big red eyes which i kind of like that i'm like well okay you know he's got the christopher lee big red eyes but they looked cool yeah uh yeah. he's got fangs it's gerard butler so he's got um i don't know like uh, a mullet it's not a mullet what do you call it's that? not a mullet it's it's like a it's like a feathered shag haircut yeah yeah very kenny g yeah, because this yeah, is what I, I would expect kinda. of uh, yeah. Romanian uh, prince from whatever, and uh, so and then the it's the '90s, so we're gonna of course put him in the long black cape trench coat. You gotta, which was very popular in the '90s. All you '90s kids remember wearing these things around. Sometimes they'd be uh, white, but these ones are black, right? Everybody had like this. It was like a trench yeah. coat. Everyone saw the crow and went out and bought one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Blade had one. Shaft had one. Uh, yeah, uh, and so and Screech didn't he have one? He had the white one, right? Wasn't it like a? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, <laughs> was didn't he wear something like that? Was, Screech? Yeah, didn't Screech they? had a lot of insane fashion, but that's not yeah. what I remember. Okay. Yeah, no, it, like I think he had a jacket and maybe like an episode, but that wasn't like a like a trademark thing for him. Okay, maybe it was nine hundred two one zero or something. I can't remember. I can't pin it down now. But uh, so, <laughs> um, okay, so and then uh, so the next. Yeah, thing- but we're but we're talking about his look. Uh, okay, well, what year was Queen of the Damned? 2002 i looked it up because i thought it was before this and it was after this that's what i was wondering i was like which came first because there's a lot of things about both movies that feel very similar like what and 
Um, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is the music. The music is because they go for that, like, you know, 2000s rock uh, soundtrack. New in metal both movies. Yeah, new metal in both movies, you know, like Corn, yeah. Lincoln Park. They do that in both movies and it relies heavily on that feel. Um, so that's like the first one that stands out. But then, like, also his look. Stuart um, Townsend looks the Stuart same. Stuart Townsend, it looks very similar to Gerard Butler in this movie. They have like the exact same hair, uh, a similar, like, well, Stuart Townsend is pretty much shirtless the whole movie and Gerard Butler's not. I would have liked that swapped actually. But, um, but like the black gothic kind of look, it's very similar. So I was it's wondering like, which one came first. Yeah, that like early 2000s, like, gothic metal like scene had a very specific yeah. look and both of these movies yeah i was very much reminded of queen of the damned watching this but i was also yeah. grateful you didn't bring that because i was worried you were going to <laughs> you know i thought i thought about it that's been on my list with like a question mark like should i go there <laughs> stay tuned yeah right yeah yeah <laughs> it's like, well there's always this kind of i mean i guess you know with the crow and like all, there was like this fusion of like that type of uh rock i don't even you know, whatever the new metal and like uh goth horror and i'm like at some point why don't they just like make dracula himself uh a rock star but i guess queen of the damned went and I was did like, that. that's they what they did, did. Yeah. yeah yeah queen of the damned did yeah and uh you, you know this movie's gonna end up taking place in new orleans because of course interview with the vampire did that and that basically after bram stoker's dracula is like the next vampire novel of uh of you know high high renown right <laughs> so, and, uh, i mean rightfully so that movie had come out by then, right? That came out in like ninety four. Interview, Interview with the Vampire. Vampire? Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. that was early to mid nineties. Yeah. Okay, so we're we're borrowing a little bit from there. Okay, so so this plane, um, because Dracula is on it, and there's gunshots that are fired and all this, and he kind of begins to you know develop his power. He's getting his power back, right? He doesn't say anything of this part in the movie, which I kind of actually did appreciate. That um, you know, like, what's he gonna say? It is kind of, and I like the Butler's performance in this way that he's kind of uh, just watching. And, you know, mm -hmm. being kind of amused by stuff and kind of absorbing the world that he's into. Yeah. Like, he's just taking it all in, which is in character for Dracula. It makes sense to me. Yeah. This is what I want to see. I guess I'm always like, okay, if you're bringing somebody into, a, you know, they wake up a hundred years later, like what's it like to reacclimate into society and everybody does right. it too easy. And I think everybody, you'd probably more be like Tom Cruise in an interview with a vampire where you're just like, ah, what is this electric light out of the sky? And I can't, you know, and freak out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, so the plane crashes into the Louisiana Bayou. And where it's discovered by Jerry Ryan from Star Trek Voyager, <laughs> who's also in this movie um, as a TV correspondent. Uh, and her and her cameraman played by the delightful Shane West. Yeah, it, it, like I mean, like I said, every, the, all the faces in this movie you will recognize. Um, yeah, this was a real who's who of like this time. Yeah, a lot of like, oh yeah, I wonder what he's doing. Yeah, like, oh man, <laughs> forgot about her. A lot of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like vitamin C. What? Yeah. That that was a shock to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm trying to remember what was her like big uh, hit song. Graduation day. The graduation song. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so she's in this movie. I can't remember if she was in a couple other films around this time, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like a who's who, right? And then you know, I was mm -hmm. like. Was was her label Virgin Records? I just wonder because Virgin Records apparently uh, must have co-sponsored this fucking movie for it's the a character in this movie. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> because um, Mary, who's our other character that we have to be introduced to, right? The Justine Waddell character uh, lives in New Orleans and works at Virgin uh, Records with. Um, uh, the vitamin C character, right? And you're like, how does this plot? There's a lot of characters in this movie, right? You're like, yeah, okay, so how does this American plot that takes place in Louisiana tie in with the Christopher Plummer uh, plot? Like, how do these two come together? Um, so we're found. Well, when is when is Mary introduced? 
She's introduced like uh, not during the heist, I think, because um, how do they introduce her in this movie? Right. That's what <laughs> oh, you don't remember. No, don't remember. Don't. OK, she has <laughs> psychic actress has zero presence. Yeah. <laughs> All right. She's got a psychic connection. She dreams of Dracula right, right, right. thrashing around in his coffin. And she and during the airplane scene, there's a shared telekinetic bond moment because you want That's this in your Dracula right. movie. He sees her in her bedroom. She sees him in the plane. And then they eventually share the same space. And we're like, ooh, these two have some kind of a connection. So now we've set up. That's right. What what Dracula is after, and then we don't know why yet, right? The movie's right. going to explain so why that. Why are us. they connected? Right. Yeah. Okay, it's all coming. It's all coming back now. That's right. And Christopher <laughs> Plummer as Van Helsing is like, oh, the evil has escaped, and I have to go to America to try and mm-hmm. track it down and stop it once and for all. And Johnny Lee Miller's like, you're not going without me, and so he follows him into mm-hmm. danger. And Christopher Plummer's like, who are you? Don't you have a TV series to get back to? <laughs> <laughs> no, because they're going to do it better on bbc yeah some of the lines in this movie were just like i don't know it was one of those movies where i watched it because i think you know everybody so i like never at any point like bought into any of it and was just kind of watching them say these lines i was like oof man they're really they're committed like actors do it's like christopher Plummer, come on you can do better than right <laughs> i i did I think vitamin C was much better than I expected her to be, honestly. She was. I was pleasantly yeah. surprised. Yeah, she was. But I mean, like, I don't know. I don't really I don't really blame him. If I was Christopher Plummer and someone was like, hey, do you want to play Van Helsing? I'd be like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I know, because you gotta do it at some point in your <laughs> right? career, right? Yeah. I think that's if you're a British actor, at some point you're you're playing even though he's Dutch, but you know, well, Rutger Hauer got to play him at one point, so you know, there you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> um So Van Helsing also has a uh, goal in this movie, which is, I guess, what this movie is adding to the Dracula lore. We're going to have to pay this off at some point uh, a little later. But basically what's set up is that he can't figure out a way. He's had Dracula, you know, imprisoned all these years and Dracula just will not die. He is beyond death he cannot be killed no matter what i've ever done to him he can't die he turns people into vampires i can kill them and that's through the usual uh you know whatever the things you got to do is the snakes and the holy water so it's so it's his whole it's his whole mission he's got his little notebook with all his notes saying like who is dracula where did he come from why can't i kill him yeah, I was missing yeah. that. I was hoping for that Alucard scene again. <laughs> We've seen so many times where they're like have Alucard written down, and they're like, "Wait a second, and then they write it out." <laughs> I love that scene, and I'm so sad when we don't get it. Yeah, but I'm. I was uh, of the three of us watching it tonight. Michaela was the uh, only one who hadn't seen this movie before, and I was kind of curious how a third act reveal was going to play when we get there. But uh, we got to get there. Okay, <laughs> so so we've set up our two like mysteries of the movie right you know and how are they going to come together so um so dracula of course immediately sets out into uh new orleans to try and locate um mary mary right mary Uh, his psychic his psychic uh, connection and Mm -hmm. so there's scenes of him of course because whenever you go to new orleans that means it's mardi gras obviously even though all year yeah always (laughs) all year so but this was kind of, you know, again, this is one of those kind of, you know, interesting scenes. It's like, okay, so here's Dracula sitting perched on top of uh, a cathedral like Batman or something, or the crow, right? Uh, watching. Yeah, the crow, very much. Yeah. And then he has to go down into the crowd and kind of wander around uh, and investigate this new 20th century. And, right. And what does he, what does he find? What's his impression here? And he, he loves it because it's it's all like it's like sin. Well, I mean, it's not Sin City. That's Vegas. But it's like Sin City. Right. It's it's just a city of passion and indulgence. And and he's he's loving it. It's 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 risque. And, you know, and he's no eating it up. like he doesn't stick out like he just blends in with all the weirdness and the debauchery. And so like that aspect, I like of it because yeah. these scenes always go one or two ways. Either it's the the. The fish out of water is walking down the street oblivious to the fact that everyone is like, what the fuck? Or they blend in completely because the town is so weird. Yeah. Right. Yep. 
morality. And in this case, and in this case, like I like when he walks in Virgin Records, I like that it's just like, oh, who's that hot dude? Because that makes more sense to me, you know. Like if if it's a weird, you know, Bella Lugosi type Dracula, you can't have that scene. Whereas this, it's like it's just some hot dude that's you know kind of attracting everybody, which is what Dracula has become to us, like that sexy uh, magnet, you know. Yeah, Apparently they, only women shop at this Virgin Records. There was not another dude too. in the store. <laughs> I thought about that too. I was like, what the fuck is it? Ladies night at Virgin Records. Well, he has, this is a part of his, that, that part of his uh, character has been played up in this movie that he does seem to have, like he, he can sense women and they, like, as soon as he makes eye contact, it's like that the thrall begins. I mean, it like really plays that up in a way that, I mean, you see it happen in other Dracula movies, but this one's just like, he walks in and he looks at a woman and she's immediately like butter. You know, she melts like butter. Like, I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> you, know? you know, I'm not going to lie. I kind of felt like I was betraying my feminism, but I was like, yeah, I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> the lure Terrible. of Gerard I had Butler. a hard time getting on board with his look in this movie enough to buy that. You know, like the look, <laughs> like Gerard Butler just looks so different from how we're used to seeing him. You know, yeah, in he does. Movie that it's just kind of jarring. Different how? I mean, he has no beard, which is, I, I don't know I that like, I've ever seen the man without a beard, you know? I was like, he's not Leonidas, Colin. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he looks slimmer in this movie. He definitely got yeah. more jacked later on in his career. Oh, yeah, for sure. for sure. Yeah. And baby Gerard Butler, as you said. Uh, yeah, baby Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's like, I'm going to fit completely into this, like, completely amoral society. At one point, he goes past a gigantic billboard that's showing some kind of video by, what is it, Monster Magnet. And there's mm-hmm. all sorts of, uh, you know, debauchery and the sin of the modern world and wars and all this stuff. And he looks at it and he says, Brilliant. And I was like, is that a critique on the style of the music video? Or he's just happy that the 20th century is uh, the turn of the 21st century has turned out this way. Yeah. He's like, the future is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, he's like, finally, my people. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he um, he's obviously set out to try and find uh, Mary. And he, uh, of course, uh, then takes uh, um, vitamin C back to her house because she can't like you know she can't resist the thrall it's like let's go back and wait for her at your house she's like okay and then he puts the bite on her in a weightless sex scene that takes place where of course everybody's rolling around as they fly up to the ceiling and there's vampire bites and a lot of over editing and over stylization yeah. <laughs> my job was on the floor during this scene because i was like <laughs> I that's a bar bet I'll lose any day that I at some point in my life I would be watching a movie where vitamin C is having a sex scene with Gerard Butler. Never in my life did I think I would see that. There's a lot of other like connective scenes that are just kind of like, wow, we're going all over the place here because um Johnny Lee Miller, of course, is recruited into the fight against vampires when he finds Christopher Plummer at the where they've taken the bodies from the crashed plane and the you know, they have the body bags. And of course, this is where Omar Epps and Jennifer Esposito, everybody like comes back to life and he has to fight them off and decapitate people. And of course, everybody's a crack shot with their crazy manufactured, um, you know, um, silver spear throwing auto gun. I thought that was kind of goofy. It, the, it had the barrel, you know, the, the repeater. It was like a, it was like an 18th century industrial <laughs> nail gun. Yeah. <laughs> Which came first, this or Van Helsing? Hmm. Yeah, no, I can't remember. Like what the year. Van Helsing movie with Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Jackman. Yeah. Yeah. What year was that? Was, wait, I think it was like 2006. Yeah. yeah I, was like, I, think that, I think that was mid 2000s. Didn't that also have like a Gatling gun, uh, silver uh, rod shooter or something like that? Silver stake I've shooter. I've never seen it. Oh, 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 really? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it might burst the length for a free show episode. Yeah. <laughs> the two hour and 20 minute epic movie. Van what? Helsing. It's that long? Oh, yeah. Oh, my it's God. Yeah. It's long. It's long. Yeah. But we, oh, we didn't talk about, we didn't mention uh, another, another star that is in this for some reason is Nathan Fillion playing the priest. Oh, yeah. Well, he wasn't I a star then. Yeah. In 2000. No, no. He, he wasn't a, he wasn't like a big star at that time, but like, it's. I still don't really understand why he was there. 
Yeah, and a scene that probably should have been edited out. There's a couple scenes where, because Mary's having these visions of like being seduced by Dracula, and she feels so horrible about it. She goes to confess to the priest. Okay. And she, yeah, and she's like, I feel like he's gonna take my soul. That's like, what do you say when someone tells you that? I know he's a priest, <laughs> but like, what do you? How do you react to that? <laughs> what is he supposed to do? Right. Yeah. I. I mean, I. I. I thought his reaction was perfectly fine. He like just got nervous and walked over and started putting candles out. Like, I get it. Like, what do you say to that? Yeah. The, this is a, this is, this is a scene that actually kind of sums up the middle portion of this movie, right? We've actually had like a fairly good sustained action coming through the sea or the, the uh, heist scenes and onto the plane and getting Dracula back in the mix and getting him to America and, you know, seeing all this stuff. And we got Van Helsing over here and it's somewhere in here that we start breaking up. Like there's action scenes followed by like scenes with the priest that are like, okay, I was kind of getting into it. And now you're throttling me back into boredom. Oh, something's happening. Now uh, you're throttling me back in scenes that were just like deflating any kind of forward momentum or tension as we were just like, here's the, are the here are these individual scenes of things that are happening. So much so that I don't even know if we can recount the connective tissue that gets us to do like the third act of this movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but basically why is Mary so important to Dracula? This is something that Johnny Lee Miller finds out and has to relay to her. What what is the connection? Right. So basically, they are they are intertwined because uh, his blood is in her How? because we find out that she is the daughter of Van Helsing, Colin. If you can believe it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we never meet mom. Mom is a mysterious character, right? Who apparently died a while ago. Van Helsing is like, well, I guess I have to go see my daughter who I have never actually made contact with. She doesn't know dad exists. Why? Cause he was trying to protect you, Mary from this horrible, right. awful family curse uh, that you actually have the blood of Dracula in you because uh, Van Helsing had it in him. And so now you have been born with the blood of Dracula. This is, of course, mm -hmm. the thing that Dracula's like, I've searched all my life to find the, you know, someone who was born with my blood. And that makes you mine and I'm yours and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, what the fuck is happening yeah, no here? Sense. Yeah, because it's like if he's trying to, to find her, like, what? Are they going to be a power couple? Like, what's the, okay, you find her. What then? They give you get to create like a super human super baby or something like that. I, I didn't I understand this. So, so is this like is this some fucked up way to talk about like pure breeding? Is that what's happening here? Oh God, yeah, kind of seems like it. Ew. Yeah, I don't know. He's been that, searching right? all this. That's that's what he's talking about. He's talking about a pure bloodline. And so, well, you so you think they're they're talking about offspring? That's the that's what we're we're thinking. I mean, here. I don't know. Not just don't, like, can that can that happen? This isn't Twilight. Can that happen? I don't know. I don't know because I think I think the way that Dracula reproduces is by biting you, and then you drink his blood, and then you know replace some of your blood, then you become a vampire, right? Or you just get the right. bite, and you somehow become a vampire. Um, we got right. so it, so because she already has his blood. Is this how like he can? make her his bride as opposed to like his child. Like, I don't really understand his logic there. Yeah. I wasn't clear on this. Yeah. And apparently neither of you are either. So I'm glad it's no. not just me. I'm not <laughs> sure what, what the, we're uh, trying to achieve other than finding her. Yeah. Like, okay, like, you found I, her. I was, I was with it because that's like typical vampire lore that when you're, when a vampire's blood is with someone else like that's how they 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 can tail them like that's their connection like i'm with it there that's the typical vampire lore but his reasoning i still don't understand yeah um at some point mary does hook up with johnny lee miller so they can try and you know research dracula this is also um van helsing makes a departure from the movie because you know I mean, that's the way that these things go. Your top line, you know, big, you know, classic Hollywood movie star doesn't stick through it all the way to the end. Although it might have been a better movie if he did, like if the, the three of them ganged up on Dracula, but he ends up uh, biting it. You know, Dracula gets his revenge. I thought his revenge would be turning Van Helsing into it. a vampire. <laughs> I, I did that on purpose. 
Yeah, I'm glad you, I'm glad you picked up what I was laying down. Yeah, good job. Uh, <laughs> right, but wouldn't the wouldn't uh, the the revenge it seems would be instead of just killing him, turn him into a vampire, make him the thing that he's been fighting for all these, you know. Uh, Maybe he can't. Maybe he, at this point he's developed immunity because he's been building it up with the injections. Well, maybe. Maybe. Never addressed right? in the movie, unfortunately. That's his vaccination. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there is like a mano a mano fight and Christopher Plummer bites the dust and he's fed to the vampire brides. This is the other thing that we carry over from the novel. And then there's a scene that basically mirrors uh, Francis Ford Coppola's uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, right? Where mm -hmm. uh, Mary comes home and then goes into some kind of trance and sees this big hallway that's got a lot of uh, flowing red drapes for no oh reason. God. I could not stop laughing at this scene. <laughs> well, I was trying because, to figure out, I'm like, is there a psychological reason for this? Or is this just exactly. like, this will look cool? That's, that's, that's it. Well, that was my exact thoughts. I said, what is happening and why Why is it happening like this? Right. Like, <laughs> like and that, that like vision of like when he, when they're in the bed together and there's all the white billowing sheets around them, like it's a fucking Enya music video. I was like, <laughs> what? what is happening right now? Yeah. We're borrowing a lot of visual styles from like gothic, uh, you know, fiction or got visual gothic fiction for, you know, forever. Like the hunger, I think did that with all the billowing drapes and like the, that was a Ridley or a Tony Scott movie. Um, but they've always seemed to do it. But this movie, I was saying, borrows stuff from Bram Stoker's Dracula because it has the vampire brides crawling along the ceiling and mm -hmm. basically doing the same thing. That I'm like, wow, <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> that's a lift. <laughs> yeah. There was some like because uh, I think there's a flashback scene that comes during the big reveal of who Dracula actually is, where they put Mary in this like red uh, dress that's also very reminiscent of like this the the costume design of uh, of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, but anyway, I guess we got to get there, right? So Mary gets abducted by Dracula, and he's going to go off and explain to her like why we're going to rule the world. I suppose the two of us. And he takes her up on top of a building where there's a big uh, Jesus saves uh, neon cross. And he explains away, uh, or no, she figures it out, right? Who he actually is. Michaela, well, he, he show, yeah, he shows her. Okay, I think, he, uh, that's right, he bites he's her. A, yeah, he her says, I want to show you what I haven't shown anyone before. And he wants to, like, share his story with her. Yeah, because look at what I've suffered all through my life. I'm cursed. This is and, hilarious to me, too. Okay, so Michaela being the first, the, the person who's newest to this, you should explain uh, this gigantic revelation in this movie. He's Judas? <laughs> yep. <laughs> because it's the twist? Yep. <laughs> yeah, sees so Judas Iscariot, right? So this is like, yes. yeah, and I'm like, the oh, the, the, bet the betrayer of Christ himself. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is one of those swing for the fences kind of like you know uh, leaps you, that you make. You're like, I got to do something new in a Dracula movie. The writer says to himself as he sits down as, and he's <laughs> like, as, as ridiculous as it is, I'm almost on board with it. That's because, where I'm at too. Yeah, because I like the justification because, you know, obviously we've always had the lore of Dracula not liking silver, not liking crosses, and now and them actually tying it together in a way that makes sense. I was like, you know, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with in you on this. <laughs> in retrospect, it makes all the other stuff that happened in the movie even more hilarious. Like yeah. when he gets when he gets triggered by the coins on the ground at Mardi Gras, like that's that's so funny now. Yeah. Like <laughs> foreshadowing, but it's foreshadowing that you, you can't connect. You just he like yeah, the coins drop. He's like Ugh, coins, and you're like what the and fuck? you're just like what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out because he remembers those thirty pieces of silver falling out you're of like, his like, Why bag. is this dude scared of loose change? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose there's always been like a you know like uh, the. Dracula vampire myth has kind of been like an inversion of Christianity. You got uh, right. death and resurrection and the crucifixes and the holy water and all that stuff, you know, but now For this sure. movie, there's always, there's always been the parallel, but they've never like tied it together in a way before. And I was like, I like that you took that, that <laughs> initiative and did it. <laughs> yeah. It's ballsy, but I appreciate them going for it. You know, yeah, I do too. <laughs> 
And we get to see Gerard Butler as a uh, uh, pre, well, not prehistory, but, you know, an ancient uh, Jewish man and uh, with a beard and all that as he <laughs> gets as at the, at the last summer betraying Jesus. Yes, Jesus Christ is in this movie <laughs> um, yes. briefly and then runs out and hangs himself and then becomes a vampire because, you know, he's cursed. Yes. Yeah. So... I don't know. There was see that's the thing about like uh, I don't know for those of you who have seen Van Helsing, it had like a revelation about something about one of Dracula's powers, and I'm like, huh, it's actually I'm going to remember that one. And it was like, wow, well, okay, you came up with something. That's kind of the same way I feel about this. I'm like, I mean, I don't know if uh, it, you're definitely going to remember it because it's like, wow, that's uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you did, you tied it all together. Um, so then I guess this sets us up for the big. Uh, action climax where we get all of our characters uh, together so they can right. do a bunch of wire work, right? Because the vampires can all, you know, it's post This, is, this can... is the moment where uh, um, he has to make Mary his, his bride, essentially. Yeah. So this is where she is like ha- becoming half vampire. She's not quite there yet. She's kind of there. Yeah. She's got to do that. Yeah. You got, you have to become one of us. And how do you do that? You kill, Colin. Yeah, you got to make your kill. first kill, right? This is a vampire thing. You got to make your first kill. And so, of course, they've captured Johnny Lee Miller. And so the brides are fucking with him. Uh, and he has, she has to kill him and drink his blood. But she fakes him out, right? Because even though she's a vampire, somehow she's able to resist that urge, right? She's not possessed right. by the demon by the, as the rest of them are. And so she starts beheading people again. Vitamin C's head goes... <laughs> into a flower potted plant because they're like in a greenhouse for some reason. That's where yeah, they're in like a rooftop greenhouse. I don't know. Yeah. I don't live in Louisiana. I don't know. This is a, this, it must be a thing. And then, uh, sure. and so then she of course deals the, uh, the, uh, a couple of uh, body blows to Dracula as they tussle on the rooftop. And then she figures out the way to actually kill Dracula. This is something that has eluded Van Helsing for all these years. But his daughter it's so figures it out. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> here it is, folks, because you've been waiting to find out. Because in case you ever encounter him in your own life, this is how you kill Dracula. You hang him and wait for the sun to come up. <laughs> and bonus points if you can have Jesus looking down on him disapprovingly while he's being hung. Yes. As long as he's judged by Jesus, you're you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. This is this is quite the scene because who knew that, that that was the thing that nobody's ever tried before is hanging him and then waiting for the sun to come up. <laughs> so he burns, but he's being hung at the same time. So it's like, right. oh. but Dracula has this moment, right, where he where uh, Mary falls from his grasp because she like takes him over the edge and then they're both hanging there and then she falls to the pavement many floors below but because she's a vampire she wakes up you know unscathed looks at him and then he says i release i release you yeah and she turns back into a, a a human again and you're like why because it's his last moment of um repentance before he dies is that what it is yeah I mean, I don't have any other answer. Maybe Gotta Michaela be. does. Okay, that is because go. just before then, just before then, she's like, it's not too late to like ask for forgiveness. Yeah. You so can go back that's into what his he's graces. Doing. Yeah. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's all he's been ever doing is just rebelling against God. And it's like, yeah. well, you could like save yourself. And apparently by doing that, that maybe that's what allows him to die. Maybe my question is this. So, It's revealed in the flashback that he shows to Mary that after Christ was crucified, he hangs himself out of guilt, right? So that's what she's mimicking when she puts like the wire around his neck and pushes him off the building. You know, she's mimicking that. What is it about that that works? Like, is it just his kryptonite? Like, since it's like a a mirror of what happened, he can't resist it? Or is it made of silver? Like, why can't he can fly? Like, why can't he get out of that situation? Okay. I may have an answer for this. Only let me hear it. Okay. But, well, this is thin. Okay. But this is what the movie actually posits. Dracula 2000. It was literally bought just because of the title. So keep going. (laughs) Okay. And I'm saying this because she actually does say this line in the voiceover dialogue at the end when she's writing in her journal. 
Okay. Uh, so in the flashback, when he's Judas and he gets hung, right? Uh-huh. And he dies. And then the rope breaks, or he opens uh-huh. his eyes, he turns into a vampire, and the rope breaks. And okay. she says, but this time, the rope didn't break. What? So basically, this okay. completes the, the you know, he was trying to die in uh, in biblical times, and now the rope held fast and killed him. I mean, she's, so- I'm saying that because she said, I said it was thin. <laughs> I'm not willing to die on this. So. Yeah. Because so because she because she used a metal cable instead of a rope. Yeah. That's it. It didn't burn, right? Because I was like, oh, the cable's going to break again, but it didn't. It held him. Ergo, he died. I, I'm going to choose to believe it was because the image of Jesus was literally like looking down on him and participating in the hanging. Cause you know, like that metal cable was around that cross light. So, Oh, so maybe the cross was acting as like a, a barrier. He couldn't move because the cross was like kryptoniting him. Right. And there it is. There that's it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Although I like oh, the fact that he was out. able to have like a big monologue, you know, cursing the day that he ever met Jesus underneath a giant neon cross. So apparently it didn't have any effect right. on him, you know, right then, like, uh, yeah, oh, whatever. whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. And so then we get a code into this movie. Oh, uh, Johnny Lee Miller survives, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just in case oh, you were yeah, worried. Yeah. Oh, you were all concerned. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He I does mean, survive. They have to, you have to, because you have to have that scene of them wearing matching leather clothing, right? Right. Okay. You got to have that. So this is the thing that, like, uh, I'm kind of curious about, like, why you have to adorn the leather uh, clothing whenever you become a vampire hunter, because the end of this movie sets up uh, the weekly TV series that never materialized, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Mary Van Helsing, Vampire Hunter. Right. I mean, it did feel like a '90s TV show. She comes out and like now I all is after yeah. all this time. I know who I am. I am Mary Van Helsing. Yeah, tonight on the WB after Charmed, it's Mary Van right. Helsing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, would it surprise you to know? Maybe Holly, you have, maybe you've seen all of these, but uh, this movie spawned two sequels that went direct to video. It sure did, Colin. The first one was uh, Dissension in 2003. And the second one was Legacy in 2005. Yeah. Come on, they're not going to do Dracula 2003 and Dracula 2005. Just stick with it. No, but they were retitled in some countries, Dracula 2, Ascension, Dracula 3, Legacy. Although, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if any of the cast from this movie actually reappears. Uh, Jason Scott no, Lee. No plays uh a he was uh bruce lee and dragon the bruce lee story he mm-hmm. plays a priest who i believe becomes possessed by the spirit of dracula and he basically becomes dracula and then somehow oh. rutger Hauer gets involved in the third movie and i think he becomes dracula i'm not entirely sure i haven't seen them so yeah patrick lucier produced them i think and joel soison who's a name that we've mentioned on this show before because i think not only did he write 976 evil uh, which we did on the show, but he also wrote the immortal cra- classic Trick or Treat. That's Trick right. Trick or Treat. Uh, yeah. He is credited <laughs> as the writer on this movie, but apparently when Harvey Weinstein, because oh, this is a Dimension Films movie, of course, right? Uh, so, it is, uh, yeah. Not Harvey, Bob. His brother Bob ran Dimension. Uh, when he read the script, Joel Sosin's script, he said, oh, this sucks. And he threw it out and he said, but it's got a great title. Yeah. Dracula he 2000. Lived- yep. He yeah. literally bought it just for the title. So then he brought on um, uh, Scott Derrickson to be the script doctor on this. Yeah, and he's and, the, the... And, and he and he admitted that he asked him. He's like, well, if it, he's like, yeah, you got to work on this movie. And he's like, well, what is it? He's like, oh, it's Dracula 2000. It sucks. He's like, well, then why'd you buy it? He's like, because the title. Yeah. That was literally what he said. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know how much of Scott Derrickson stuff got. Uh, Scott Derrickson is now a director, and you know he made obviously Doctor Strange and uh, yeah. the um, what was the Emily Rose was it Emily Rose the possession of uh, uh, the one with oh. Jennifer Carpenter. Yeah, yeah, the, um, the Exorcism of Emily. The Exorcism, Rose. Of, Exorcism of, of Emily Rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually like that movie. I did too. Actually, I like that movie. Yeah. 
Uh, and I think Aaron Kruger, who wrote like a bunch of the Scream movies and several uh-huh. other Dimension films, probably Phantoms for all we can remember that we did on the show, because they all seem to like, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> he did some work on it. So apparently it was a hodgepodge mm-hmm. of stuff from a bunch of different writers until they were like, OK, here's your product. This is Dracula 2000. Boom. And go to town. And it came out on, uh, I think, like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> did it come out on december 25th or something like that of the year 2000 i, I think so <laughs> yeah it did christmas it did movie. yeah it came out on christmas you're right yeah but bob weinstein and dimension films were famously like counter programming christmas there for a while because they came out yeah. with a movie called the darkness which had anna paquin in it which is another shitty shitty fucking movie but it, it mm-hmm. opened on christmas day and made money and bob was like we got to we got to put horror movies on on Christmas Day. So that's why Black Christmas, I think, was the next year. And eventually, like, uh, yeah, Dracula 2000. For, so for a little while there, he had a run of uh, Dimension Christmas horror movies. Um, we got mm-hmm. any, any other stray, stray thoughts there before we uh, we tell you whether or not or tell the listeners at home if they should watch this movie? Um, I mean, it, we kind of mentioned like there was just some some of the dialogue in this was an interesting choice. Some of it were like nods to, you know, the original Dracula, um, like the antique business was called Carfax after Carfax Abbey from the original. Um, yeah, the moment where he says, I don't drink coffee um, in the original Dracula 1931, it was I never drink wine, you know, just nods to like earlier Dracula stuff, which. I don't know. Like, I kind of like that kind of stuff. I don't like when it's blatantly ripped off like they did with, you know, the women crawling on the walls and that kind of shit with like the brides and stuff. But I do like the little subtle nods. Um, There was a line that Johnny Lee Miller says when he says, never, ever fuck with an antique stealer, which I'm not going to lie, made me chuckle. I thought it was funny. (laughs) And apparently that was just something that he would say, like after filming a take just as a joke. And they liked it so much they added it to the movie, which I was like, I like that. It it worked for me. Um, So, yeah, that was just like some little tidbits that I that I enjoyed about it. My (laughs) my favorite thing that I read about this when I was doing my research, I read a. um, a review. <laughs> I read a review from J- uh, James Beardinelli from Real Views. Here's what he said of Dracula 2000. Of all the indignities to have vi- been visited upon Dracula during the past century, including being the inspiration for a serial and a Sesame Street character and being lampooned by Mel Brooks, none is more unsettling than what has happened to the world's most fam- famous vampire in Dracula 2000. <laughs> Wow, he Ouch. didn't. He didn't like the Judas Iscariot <laughs> thing. That apparently it was that was too far. That, that made me laugh <laughs> so hard. I was like, this dude is passionate about it. I I love reading reviews where they are just digging their heels in on how much they hate. Yeah, not only like <laughs> not just hate the movie, but hate one specific thing about the movie too. I love when they hate right. one specific thing so much. <laughs> Well, I guess you're going to, now that we've spoiled it for you, should you actually watch it? Should, you know, should you check this yeah. movie out? Or maybe you've we seen told, it and you're like, now I got to go yeah. back. Should I go back and rewatch this movie? Well, we're going to we tell told you. told you what that guy thought, but what did we think? That's what's important here. Exactly. So first of all, we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Well, thank you, Igor. He looks so cute in his little trench coat. He really does. It's becoming on him. I'm disappointed. The plastic fangs or nothing. I mean, like now he's like, yeah. No, right. yeah, he's going for that low key look. He's just got <laughs> yeah. the, you know, that that new metal goth, you know. Oh, oh yeah. that's that's what that's yeah. what he's going for. Okay. Um, all you right. You know, we had his, Colin. You know, we had his fangs filed down years ago. <laughs> After that really last the one, best, yeah, where he was biting yeah. everybody for his was, safety uh, and ours. Yeah, obviously. Then yeah. COVID came around. We're like, we don't want to get him infected or him infecting right. people or him getting infected and bringing exactly. it back. Yeah. Um, well, we want to remind you how you can take uh, part in this interactive portion of our show. You can follow along on our social media, and that means first of all, find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Giant Freak Show. We're also on Twitter. At that that freak show. show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can email us directly. 
Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. And you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, MF Matt lets us know that we are inducting someone onto the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame tonight. The wall or the hall? This is the wall, right? Okay. This is Nathan right. Fillion. Yay! All right. Because About he time. was in uh, Dracula 2000, Slither, and Super. You remember Super? Nope. All right. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I, I wish I could forget that movie. Not yeah. a fan. <laughs> Um, well, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, oh, man, I'm ashamed to say I like this movie more than I probably should. It has all the fun vampire hunter stuff that I enjoy. I also really like the Judas connection to vampires. It was one of those things that has was so obvious. I can't believe no one ever used it before. Yeah, I think that kind of sums up our sentiments about it. It's like, you know what? I feel like I shouldn't like it, but I do. <laughs> right. Well, and as someone who like... <laughs> doesn't know a ton about bible lore to me it was like even more mind-blowing because i was like yeah you know so yeah yeah. Uh, i I think you'll find we agree yeah stephen hayes says this is a bit of a guilty pleasure for me i know it's not a great movie but there's something about it that keeps me coming back every so often the action scenes are pretty good and i like the way they link dracula's origin to the judas iscariot story the three brides certainly don't hurt either it's enjoyable i don't know (laughs) Just a move, but it worked. <laughs> uh, Grant Paris says, I've seen this. It doesn't exactly leave a strong memory, but the first time I ever saw Jerry Ryan. Oh. Apparently, he does not watch Star Trek Voyager. Uh, Neither do I. You're in good company. <laughs> uh, Kryptonian Orphan says, this is my new nice. favorite podcast. You earned a five-star review, and I tell everyone about your show. About Dracula 2000, it's a guilty pleasure for sure. Jerry Ryan asking about her boobs, rolling on the floor laughing, thinking I remembered the Judas twist, and thinking that was interesting. Aw, thank you so much, and welcome Thanks. to the Freak Show family. Thanks for the review. Uh, Travis Legler says, uh, I think I would be more intimidated by Leslie Nielsen and Dracula dead and loving it. I don't know. It's been years from the last time I watched this, but I do remember falling asleep. Well, freak show superstars. Is there any reason to go back? Well, Two you'll, things. Have to, you'll have to wait yes. and see. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You should probably go back. I'm just saying this now. And second, I'm so glad someone else is talking about Dracula dead and loving it. Cause I have a secret love for that movie. That's not so secret. I yeah, love that movie. I, I will. I will give it that Gerard Butler is not really threatening in this movie. No. <laughs> well, David Williamson writes in and says, this is Transylvania. <laughs> nice. Uh, yep. And uh, Ed Snyder says vitamin C best of luck. In the movie. And uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg says this is not a giant step up from Howard the Duck. I disagree. I, but okay. I big time disagree, but maybe it is just like the palate cleansing of it being after how Howard the Duck that I feel that way, you know? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> About Howard the Duck, Jacob Laws wrote in and said, such a foul movie. You got nah. duck titties. Yeah, that's right. It was F O W L. You got yeah. duck titties, used duck condoms, woman on duck attempted sex, quack foo, lesbian biker gang known as Satan sluts, bird puns everywhere. What's not to love? Everything. Everything Those you are just all the said. reasons I don't yeah. love it. <laughs> Everything you just said. <laughs> uh, Michael Whitaker says, I remember being a slightly older child and watching this movie and actually working out how the Howard puppet operated in the scene where he's just in his underwear. The two actors hold his arms where uh, the two actors holding his arms were essentially his puppeteers for them. As a kid, that made me feel very clever. Huh. Puppeteers really is a about stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't really think about that. Yeah, there's like six puppeteers, I think, uh, that operated uh, Howard. In, and uh, there was a duck coach, which we did, I don't think we mentioned on the last episode. <laughs> a duck coach. Uh, Thane Neufeld says, Ugh, this comic was so good for its era, but this movie is a banana sandwiches with cuckoo sauce. Banana sandwich in a good way or a bad way? You know, if, well, if when you, once you put cuckoo have- sauce on it, then it's like, yeah. If our if our listeners have read Howard the Duck, can you just tell us like what 
an example of like a story in the Howard the Duck comic would yeah. be like? Like, what would happen yeah. in a Howard the Duck comic? I'm curious. Yeah, like, is he because he's a PI, right? So is he just invading, like, or investigating like normal stuff, or what's happening in these comics? I think he's. And only, I don't care enough to a, read it, so don't tell me to read it. Yeah, yeah he's only either. a PI for like a little, like in more modern versions of it, not as you go. Right. Yeah, so what so. are his adventures? What shenanigans does he get into? I want to know what's going on, but I don't want to read it. So just tell me. You're going to have to wait for the Marv, the MCU movie. You take that back. Okay. You shut your dirty mouth. All right. About our Swamp Thing episode, Pat Hetfield wrote in and said, I'm going to have to disagree with Michaela. Sorry, but I don't think Swamp Thing and Man Thing look very much alike. Swamp Thing is green and has a more human looking face where Man Thing is brown and has what I can only call tendrils where his mouth is. I always thought he looked scarier. I will take your word for it, sir. That's fair. <laughs> I'm not an expert in either, so... You're probably right. <laughs> well, uh, Michael Whitaker says both Swamp Thing and Man Thing were predated by a character called the Heap. And he says, it's funny that you're doing a Howard the Duck episode because the character who's, he's a character who's tied closely with Man Thing, who's got one of the funniest book comic titles in the biz, Howard the Duck. Well, I think we actually talked about that on the Howard the Duck episode, right? Did we? I, block, I blocked that out. Yeah, yeah it didn't. Yes. Yeah. Just when you think man thing is a bad name, the heap comes along. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sander Antonides says compared, uh, or he, what he did was he compared Dick Durock, who was a swamp thing in two movies and a TV series to Roddy McDowell, who was in four of the five planet of the apes movies. And he was in the TV series. So there you go. Um, Grant Parrish said, did anyone watch the episode of AJ and the Queen where Adrian Barbeau and Mark Singer run into an auto sh- or run an auto shop? It felt like a shout out to the freak show because Catwoman, uh, Adrian Barbeau played Catwoman on Batman, uh, the animated yeah. sh- series, because Catwoman and the Beastmasters save RuPaul with the power of a wet t-shirt contest. It was beautiful. What? Wow. That sounds like a Mad Lib sentence. Uh, yeah. It really does. AJ and the Queen. <laughs> And we have not done Beastmaster yet. Somehow Beastmaster remains No, we haven't. It's elusive. been on my list for a while. Yeah. It's been on my list for a long time. Yeah. Too. When I want to put Don Coscarelli on the wall, I'll bring it. There you go. <laughs> uh, Apple Eva says, uh, I like Adrian Barbeau's hairstyle. Well, all right. <laughs> You're allowed. That's yeah. fine. That's fair. You can. There was much, yeah. uh, much consternation about that on that episode. I remember the term helmet hair was used as a mm. derogatory. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, Travis Legler says, I just started listening to your Swamp Thing episode. Yes, we too have a huge issue with suicidal deer and wild turkeys that are always running in front of cars. I used to have a 2011 Ford Ranger pickup truck, and by the time I sold it, the truck was on its third hood, and each side fender had been replaced twice. I think I had three grills put on it. Needless to say, my insurance rates are a little higher because of both of them, but I'm loving the episode. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people always talk about the deer, but people don't realize how destructive turkeys are. (laughs) Well, like, and they're really stupid. Like, they see the reflection in something and they attack it. So they'll get the shit out of your car. So stupid. Um, a couple weeks ago, then we watched the Stepford Wives and Steve Carney said, I love the 2004 Stepford Wives even more than the original. I legit would give this film an eight or nine out of a 10. It's very of its time, just like the 75 original, but I enjoy that it went in a totally different direction tonally and seems to wear its goofiness proudly as a lover of all things New England. I want to live in Stepford, minus the <laughs> robot clones, of course. It's Yeah, no, it's kooky. It's, I, 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 like I, wish... have to, I, I feel like I have to believe that comment's a troll. I, I almost cannot yeah. believe that that's a sincere comment. Like. <laughs> say it's better than the 75 one is wild. hard to believe <laughs> it's hard to believe <laughs> well we thank you all for writing in now we're going to go around the table and we're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie dracula 2000 starting with colin what did you think of dracula 2000 uh well i mean like uh, you know i mean i own it okay that's not giving anything away i'm just saying Uh, i own it but i am a collector of like all things dracula i think i have like most of the appearances that dracula has made since 1922 right with nosferatu i got them all i'm that big of a fan Uh, (laughs) yeah yep that's it as a collector thing i have dracula untold i'm not going to tell anybody watch that movie but one day (laughs) it might be like you know i need there's something that you know whatever on the dracula kick and you got to watch them all um so 
I did appreciate that this movie started off with a recreation of the voyage of the Demeter and all that. I'm like, oh, now watching it, I'm like, oh, it's pretty cheap. But, you know, they did set up a guy who was tied to a, you know, like the steering wheel yeah. of a ship and all this other stuff. And I'm like, oh, they're they actually going to go with like a kind of a gothic flavor. And you get to see him in London a little bit. And I'm like, ooh, that stuff goes a long way with me. I actually was kind of. I mean, you know, it's kind of what level the movie's playing on during these opening scenes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I appreciated that the Christopher Plummer role was played serious. I'm like, okay, he's stepping into like the he's he's in the Peter Cushing uh, level of his career, where he's like going to be playing these types of characters. Of course, that didn't happen. He won Oscars and stuff. Uh, (laughs) Former Oscar (laughs) winner, future Oscar winner, I think. Um, But I think. You know, watching it tonight, I was like, I always, when I think of this movie, I remember the opening scenes. I remember the heist. I remember the thing on the plane. I remember the plane crash and Jerry Ryan. I remember, you know, Johnny Lee Miller is going to come over there. He's got that gun. And it's about the time that everybody gets to Louisiana that even this time, the movie started to fall apart for me. And I was like, well, what? And then of course I remember the, the reveal of uh, that he's Judas at the end, which kind of like wakes you back up again and like, Oh, and then you'll remember that. So you remember, like, Mm -hmm. I remember the beginning and I remember the end and in between I'm like, what's happening there and why am I not engaged? And it just feels like it's all over the map. And one scene we're going to be with Jennifer Esposito seducing police officers in an interrogation room. And then Dracula just shows up and you're like, how'd he get here? And then in another scene, we're going to be running from Dracula in a graveyard. And then all of a sudden we're going to be downtown, uh, you know, uh, Mardi Gras. And then the vampire brides are going to attack him. Like, Whoa, how are people getting where they're going? And what, what was this character's motivation here? And so I think that's the problem with the movie it is all over the map it doesn't make any sense you could have edited it wait at least 15 minutes probably out of it and Mm -hmm. just you know follow your through storyline if it doesn't involve your main characters you know it's got to go and i think that's also the problem with spending so much time with the the heist uh, you know the people on the heist because they're not yeah they're not major characters in the rest of the movie uh so that's why it sets up something that kind of doesn't follow through i think yeah you're right uh the heroine justine waddell is not well cast for this movie and so she doesn't really make an impression but to be honest with you none of the action did either i remember all the other faces in it uh gerard butler i think pulls off a pretty decent movie dracula right i really don't have any problem with uh the his uh performance and i just wish it was a different movie um and uh i mean yeah i guess i can't I don't know if that like ending is so like bonkers nuts that he'd go like, well, you got to see the fucking movie where uh, <laughs> Dracula turns out to be Judas, you know, yeah. I'm not going to tell you, but, but you know, we've ruined it for you, but I don't know. Would that like put it over the edge of like goofiness where you have to see it? Cause it has that. It's like, that's that movie. I don't know. I'm, I'm torn. I am going to say, man, I think I got to say no. I got, I think I still think like it's uh, you know, not it's not well put together in the, in that like 40 minutes, you know, of the middle where it's just all aimless all over the place that I think it fails as a movie, but it does rally right there at the very end um, with that shocking <laughs> revelation. So I think I'm going to say, I don't know. I think I'm going to say no, and maybe <laughs> history will judge me harshly, but uh, uh, let's go with uh, Michaela. What'd you think of Dracula 2000? Yes, this is my first time watching it, and I really didn't know what to expect because somehow this movie like completely missed me. Um, didn't really know anything about it. It it just was you know lost in that shuffle of those early two thousands like big budget like big cast horror movies, you know. And uh, I like I said, there was stuff in this movie I never expected to see. Uh, vitamin C and Gerard Butler having a sex scene together, and her becoming a bride of Dracula. Uh, I mean, Dracula being Judas, I still can't get over that. <laughs> That's that is such a bold move, but like I have so much respect for making that kind of bold move. You know, so mm-hmm. I feel like movies now wouldn't do that. They would play mm-hmm. it too safe. It would just be a beat for beat remake. I mean, look at all the Disney remakes we're getting right now. They are literally like frame for frame the same as the anime. Right. Movie. Yeah, they don't take any chances. Right. Um. So I have a lot of respect for taking that kind of chance and a chance that like actually kind of makes sense when you think about it you're like wow okay all these pieces do add up like it's it's not just insane for the sake of being insane right Um, the title great title for this movie 
I love that the title for this movie in this movie is like, it's like those old Reese's commercials where it's like, you got chocolate in my peanut butter. You got peanut butter in my chocolate. Like, <laughs> this is the freak show version of that because Colin's like, you, Holly, you got your 2000s movie in my Dracula movie. And Holly's like, Colin, you got your Dracula in my 2000s movie, you know? So I love that about it, you know? And honestly, Colin, I expected you to hate it because of all the 2000s stuff. I really thought you were going to hate the movie. I am so like, I will take that on the fence from you because I expected you to hate this. Um, I think I'm going to recommend it just because like, I mean, I obviously love the time capsule nature of like any movie Mm -hmm. from this time and like the vitamin C and all that weird stuff. I love that. I love being like, oh yeah, I remember that guy for when he was like hot for a minute in the early 2000s. Love those moments. But I also like, I like the chances it takes and it, Maybe my brain is clouded coming off of having just watched Howard the Duck and how much I hate that. <laughs> just like such a breath of fresh air in comparison that I'm just like giving this movie more of a pass than it deserves. But it definitely has problems. I agree, Colin. Like there are scenes that don't really connect at all and don't really mean anything and are kind of pointless in the middle. But whatever. It's still more watchable than Howard the Duck. So like, you know, I'll take it any day. So I'm going to recommend it. And I am surprised that I enjoyed it as much as I did. So Holly, bring us home with this one. So yeah, I feel like I 100% agree with both of you, which is funny because you recommended it and you didn't, but you're both spot on. Like for real, the The middle of this movie is just a blur of what the fuck is happening. Like, do I care what's happening? Am I following what's happening? Does it make sense? Does it matter? But at the same time, like, I'm not offended by it. I, the, like, like how I'm saying at the beginning of this movie, you know, with the, the familiar Dracula, you know, the, the 1800s, the Demeter, like the, the things that we remember about Dracula, like, it's refreshing to see that. Um, and then the end, obviously, the, the twist is not something. When I when I first saw this, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's who? Like, I was so shocked that they went there. But then, like, it just, I was like, huh. Okay. Okay, Dracula 2000. I see what we're doing. And I'm, I like it. I'm with it. And that's all I've remembered about this movie. Like I saw it years ago and that's all I remembered because if Colin, you were saying that's all you're going to remember. You're very right about that. That's all I remembered. Um, but at the same time, like I said, it's the, the middle part is not offensive. It's not good. It's not well edited. It's not well directed. The act, our act, our main actress is not good. We've established that Jared Butler is fine, but is he great? No, he's not great, but he's okay. Um, but it is not offensive. This is, we've talked about before when a movie is like a sleepy Sunday kind of movie, you just put it on. You don't really have to pay attention because you know the story of Dracula. So it's like, eh, I don't know what just happened, but it doesn't really matter. Like eventually she's going to become a vampire. Like we know what's going to happen. So it's just one of those like sleepy Sunday kind of movies. You can put it on, kind of pay attention. But that 2000 nostalgia that Michaela was talking about, that hits me. I, I love that. It takes me right back to a, a, a beautiful time. And I, I love that feeling. Um, so I do give it a big pass for that. It, it definitely hits my nostalgia feels. Um, so yeah, it's not a movie out that I'm going to give a glowing recommendation. I'm not going to go out and tell everyone, oh, you got to see Dracula 2000. But I'm going to be like, you know what? If you haven't seen it, you should give it a watch. You're not going to be wowed by it. but sh- you're going to see something that's kind of fun. So yeah, go for it. So yeah, not a glowing recommendation, but I'll recommend it for funsies. Why not? Dracula 2000. Give it a shot. Give it a, give it a half ass watch. <laughs> there you go. I wonder if I should change my review. I really am on the fence. Okay. I'm not going to I'm just stick with my, my with my guns. Uh, All right. So that's two and a half. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Oh, and uh, uh, just a teaser. The thing that the the big question about Dracula that Van Helsing answers is why he can't see his reflection in a mirror. You have to watch Van Helsing to find that out. Um, (laughs) So uh, (laughs) next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we watching next week? 
We are going to watch something I've never seen either. So it'll be an adventure for all of us. Ooh. We're going to watch Pierce Brosnan's first leading man role in Nomads from oh. 1985. Nomads. Okay, yeah. Interesting. Okay. I think that's. I've, re- I've recently heard about it. I feel like no one I know has seen it. So it'll I've be an never adventure. seen this. I've, I've never seen, seen this. bits yeah. and pieces of it, but I remember it's John, it's future diehard director, John McTiernan's first movie. So and yeah. Predator yeah. director as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. So next week, nomads on the Saturday night freak show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.